This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi horror film called From Beyond, which is based on a short story by H.P. Lovecraft. The movie chronicles the consequences of a dangerous experiment that aims to let humans peer into other dimensions. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Like explorers, scientists love to venture into the unknown in pursuit of knowledge. Just like the past that explorers of old had tread, the experiments that scientists perform can be treacherous. This movie shows how dangerous an experiment can be when the scientists don't even know what to expect. Dr. Crawford Tillinghast and Dr. Edward Pretorius successfully carry out an experiment that allows them to uncover hidden things, but they discover that the results can be deadly. One of them is totally determined to see the outcome, so the other must do all he can to keep the dangerous things from creeping into this world. Inside the house of Dr. Pretorius sits an experimental machine called the Resonator, which is supposed to give humans a glimpse of other dimensions. One night, Edward's assistant, Dr. Crawford Tillinghast, turns on the machine and catches sight of a fish-like creature flying through the air. As he observes it, the creature suddenly flies towards him and bites him on the cheek. After pulling the creature off his face, Crawford quickly turns off the machine consequently making it disappear. He checks the blood dripping from his face to make sure he isn't hallucinating before telling Edward that he managed to make the resonator work. Edward immediately goes to the attic and turns on the machine to verify his assistant's claims. The machine suddenly malfunctions, so Crawford tells Edward to turn it off, but the obsessed physicist is delighted by the changes he is experiencing in his mind. Edward refuses to shut it down even as he senses that something is emerging. Right in the first scene, we immediately see that Edward is the mad scientist who would stop at nothing to complete an experiment. There's no indication that he's interested in money or prestige. He is only excited about what he would see and feel. Crawford also wants to complete the experiment, but not at the expense of their lives. He is far more cautious than Edward because he has already seen that the creatures from beyond can harm them. A neighbor is bothered by the noise coming from Edward's house, so she calls the police. After hanging up, her dog suddenly runs toward Edward's house, so she hesitantly goes inside to find it. When she finally finds her pet outside the attic, someone suddenly breaks down the door with an axe. Crawford emerges and runs down the stairs past the terrified woman. When Crawford reaches the gate, the police arrive and arrest him. The woman suddenly realizes that she left her dog which is still in the attic, sniffing Edward's beheaded remains. Soon after the arrest, Crawford is confined to a psychiatric ward under the care of Dr. Block. Jordan Fields, who works at the district attorney's office, arrives at the hospital with Dr. Catherine McMichaels to assess Crawford's sanity to find out if he could stand trial for Edward's murder. Block tells Catherine that she's impressed with some of her work. When Catherine notes that she is not in favor of locking up schizophrenic patients, Block issues a snide remark, saying she knows that Catherine prefers performing experiments on them, like lab animals. The exchange with Block hints that Catherine is well known in their circles because of her achievements. Block seems to be envious of Catherine, so she might be exaggerating when she claims that Catherine treats schizophrenics like lab animals. Catherine's refusal to lock up her patients could be an indication of her concern for them. We could surmise that Catherine gained her reputation because she wants to keep learning about her fieldwork and she's willing to take risks. It's possible that she conducts her experiments humanely, so the risk to the subjects would be minimal. In contrast, Block only does what has been tried and tested, so her career remains stagnant. After being introduced to Crawford, Catherine asks him about the purpose of their experiments. Crawford reveals that they were trying to activate the sixth sense by stimulating the pineal gland. Catherine points out that it's not a new theory, but Crawford argues that it's a fact. Catherine surmises that they've proven the theory with their experiments. When she asks what went wrong with it, Crawford says they saw creatures swimming in the air. He notes that the creatures are always around them, but humans can't see them without the resonator and the creatures also can't see them. Crawford says he had to destroy the resonator because something came and bit off Edward's head. Block thinks that Crawford is already beyond their health, but Catherine suggests performing a CAT scan on him. When they look at the result, they find out that Crawford's pineal gland is enlarged, 
Catherine realizes that Crawford might be telling the truth about their experiment, so she proposes to recreate it. Block contends that it would be unethical, but Catherine argues that she can find out what really happened to Edward by performing the experiment. Fields acknowledges that the circumstances surrounding Edward's death are not sufficiently explained, so he gives Catherine permission to take Crawford back to the house. Edward's experiment has captured Catherine's interest before she found out that Crawford's pineal gland had grown. She believes Crawford, but she doesn't say it directly because she is aware that the story is outrageous. Even with their discovery, Block still thinks that Crawford is delusional. She has no interest in re-evaluating him in light of the new evidence they found. Fields have doubts about declaring Crawford as a suspect because of the lack of evidence and the other bizarre details about the incident. Crawford only became the suspect by default because of his association with Edward and his presence at the crime scene. Crawford doesn't want to repeat the experiment, but Catherine tells him that he'll be staying at a psychiatric ward if he refuses. Upon reaching the car park, they are greeted by Sergeant Bubba Brownlee, who has been tasked to oversee their operation. When they arrive at the house, Crawford tries to get out of the van to escape, but Bubba tells him that the van is equipped with a childproof lock. When they get inside, Crawford sneaks away while Catherine and Bubba are trying to find the circuit breakers to turn on the power. During their search for Crawford, Bubba comes across a video where Edward's BDSM session is running. Bubba remarks that Edward has a weird pastime, but Catherine says she's not interested in his private life. When they reach the resonator, Crawford emerges with an axe and runs toward the machine where Catherine is standing, but Bubba manages to stop him. Crawford clarifies that he wants to destroy the resonator, so Catherine tells Bubba to let him go. After dinner, Crawford repairs the resonator and prepares to turn it on. He warns Catherine and Bubba to stay still to prevent the creatures from seeing them. As the vibrations take effect on them, Catherine and Crawford stare at each other in seeming admiration while Bubba sees some creatures floating in the air. When Bubba walks toward the creatures, one that looks like a jellyfish latches onto his hand and bites him. Crawford senses that something is coming, so he tries to turn the machine off, but a voice stops him. When the creature emerges from the dark, they find out that it's Edward. Turning on the resonator again should be a perfect opportunity for Crawford to prove that he didn't kill Edward, but he is more fearful about unleashing the creatures from the other dimension than being perceived as a murderous lunatic. The only other thing that he's afraid of is being locked up indefinitely in the psychiatric ward. It isn't clear why he eventually gave in. Like any other scientist, he is still probably curious about why he only had a glimpse of the other dimension. He probably also felt the urge to show his discovery to others. Crawford contends that he witnessed his death, but Edward says he merely moved to another dimension. Crawford can't believe that he's really Edward, so he invites Crawford to touch him. When Crawford grabs his shoulder, his skin changes shape like clay. Edward starts laughing maniacally and peels off the skin on his face. He stresses that his body may change, but his mind is indivisible. Bubba shoots Edward as he transforms into something more monstrous, but it has no effect on him. Before Edward's claws could reach them, Crawford switches off the resonator. During breakfast, Catherine expresses her fascination with the creature's ability to control every molecule in its body. She further notes that Crawford is not mentally ill because they saw the same things. Catherine surmises that schizophrenics could be having hallucinations because they have enlarged pineal glands, so she plans on conducting a study on them. Bubba quips that his genital was also stimulated by the vibration and asks Catherine if there's a connection. Catherine explains that the pineal gland is also responsible for regulating the instinct to copulate. Bubba hints that their work there is done because they've already learned that Crawford didn't kill Edward. However, Catherine wants to conduct another experiment because she believes it could help her find a cure for schizophrenia. Crawford and Bubba are against the idea, so Catherine tells them to get some rest before deciding anything. Catherine's insistence on repeating the experiment hints that she may be reckless and irresponsible. Asking Bubba and Crawford to wait before making any decision shows that she has already made up her mind, so it's the two men who need to change theirs. Catherine had become obsessed with the experiment, but it's not on the same level as Edward. Unlike Edward, Catherine has thought of useful implications for their discovery. She's eager to use the machine to find out more about schizophrenia, whereas Edward only wants to experience what's on the other side. Catherine has some trouble sleeping because of her fascination with the experiment, so she goes to the attic and turns on the resonator. Crawford suddenly feels his head throbbing, so he runs to the attic and tells Catherine to turn the machine off. 
Catherine refuses and starts kissing Crawford passionately. When Crawford breaks away, Edward suddenly appears in the room with a deformed body. Crawford attempts to turn off the machine while Catherine distracts Edward, but Edward grabs her and threatens to kill her. Crawford runs down to the basement, but Bubba intercepts him. When Bubba learns that he's going to turn off the circuit breakers, he decides to help. Meanwhile, Edward takes the opportunity to mistreat Catherine and fondle her with his slimy hands while Crawford is away. When Crawford and Bubba reach the basement, they find a gigantic worm waiting for them, so Bubba goes back upstairs to grab a knife. Crawford jumps over the creature to reach the circuit breakers, but the worm pulls him down before he can get to the switch. In the attic, Edward is transformed into something more hideous and tries to swallow Catherine's head. Bubba tries to pull him out of the worm's mouth, but he fails, so he pulls the wires from the circuit breakers instead. The machine suddenly switches off, and all the creatures disappear. Crawford drops to the ground without a strand of hair on his head. Catherine pulls off the wires from the machine to prevent it from turning back on again. Catherine started to act like Edward when she refused Crawford's demand to turn off the resonator. She has become so engrossed with the stimulation the machine provides that she seems to have forgotten why she wanted to perform the experiment. It's evident that her behavior is changing as a result of the enlargement of her pineal gland and she's more susceptible than Crawford because she's not resisting it the way that he does. Fortunately, she quickly regained her self-control when she saw Edward's hideous form. Although Crawford was able to resist the effects of the resonator, he is still vulnerable to the creatures in the other dimension. Crawford's hair loss suggests that he might have gone through some irreversible changes even when the creature failed to absorb him. Catherine apologizes for turning on the machine, but she still wants to run the experiment without anybody else in the house. She argues that the presence of others is only causing dangerous distractions. Bubba points out that Catherine is acting like a junkie. He tells Catherine to dress up Crawford while he prepares the van so they can leave. He threatens to take Catherine out of the house by force if she refuses to leave. As Bubba loads their things in the van, Catherine finds a dominatrix outfit inside a cabinet and wears it. When Bubba returns to the room, he finds Catherine on top of Crawford, who is sound asleep. While Catherine seduces Bubba, electricity starts shooting out of the circuit breaker. Bubba resists Catherine's advances and forces her to look at herself in the mirror so she can come to her senses. Upstairs, the wires suddenly attach themselves to the resonator and turn it on. Crawford wakes up and senses that the machine is restarted, so they all run to the attic. Catherine's odd behavior shows that some of the machine's effects persist even when it's off. It is perplexing that she still wants to continue with the experiment, but Bubba had correctly observed that she'd become addicted to the stimulation of her pineal gland. Bubba had been exposed to the resonator for the same duration as Catherine, but he manages to maintain his presence of mind. Like Crawford, he had been resistant to performing the experiment once he found out how dangerous it was. Crawford has been exposed longer than the two of them, so it must only be a matter of time before his mind caves. Bubba tries turning the machine off, but he repeatedly gets hit with bolts of electricity. When Catherine and Crawford run toward the resonator, a swarm of bees attacks them. Bubba cuts the cables with an axe, but the currents continue to flow. Bubba shines a flashlight on Crawford and realizes that the swarm is attracted to light. He throws the flashlight away, but the light ends up pointing towards him and when it lands, the bees attack him. After the swarm leaves, Bubba's flesh from the neck down has been consumed. Not long, the monstrous Edward appears and grabs Catherine with his tentacles. Edward tells Crawford that he intends to devour Catherine so their minds can merge. When Crawford suddenly feels a stabbing pain in his head, Edward surmises that he's starting to evolve. He urges Crawford to let it happen, but Crawford fights it hard to hold on to his humanity. Soon, Crawford's pineal gland bursts out of his head and allows him to see the world differently. As Edward tries to devour Catherine, she grabs a fire extinguisher and sprays it on the machine to cause a short circuit. The resonator shuts down, but only for a moment, so Catherine continues spraying it. When Edward disappears, Catherine finds Crawford unconscious on the floor. Crawford ends up back in the hospital, where Block tries to remove his pineal gland. Before she could do so, the police arrive to ask Block for her opinion on Catherine's state of mind because she's telling them an unbelievable story. Catherine acknowledges that she caused Bubba's death and tells Fields to destroy the machine, but Fields ignores her recommendation and leaves her in Block's custody.
Catherine naturally loses her credibility because of her account of the incident. She couldn't easily lie about it because of Bubba's death and the inexplicable changes in Crawford's body. Her recognition of her responsibility in the tragedy does not help in convincing them that she's not insane. The only way that she could prove her sanity is to show them what happens when they start the machine, but it would only expose them to great danger. Since Block and Fields think that she's gone crazy, her plea to destroy the resonator only sounds like the ramblings of a madwoman. After Fields leaves, Block instructs a nurse to prepare Catherine for electroshock therapy. Catherine tries to escape, but two orderlies block her path in the hall. Crawford leaves the operating room and grabs some food from a tray, but he's disgusted by the taste. Using the vision from his pineal gland, Crawford ends up in the pathology lab. Block learns that Crawford has escaped, but she immediately finds him eating brains in the lab. Block tells him to stop eating, but Crawford says he likes the taste. When he realizes that he's eating a brain, he drops it and asks Block what's happening to him. Block tells him that she doesn't know, but she's determined to find out. Before they can leave the lab, Crawford's pineal gland emerges and takes control of his body. He suddenly grabs Block and takes an eye out of its socket so he can suck her brain. Elsewhere, a staff member has already finished preparing Catherine for shock treatment, but a nurse tells him that he's needed elsewhere. As the staff member releases Catherine from the straps, she hits him with the lighting equipment and escapes from the room. As she drives the van out of the hospital, Crawford sees her but fails to stop her. When an ambulance arrives, Crawford attacks a paramedic and eats his brain. He subdues another paramedic who manages to break free, but he catches up to her and kills her. When his pineal gland retracts into his skull, Crawford is horrified to learn that he has killed someone. As the patient screams for help, Crawford drives the ambulance to escape from the hospital. Crawford is losing the battle to keep his humanity despite his efforts. He's still showing signs that he could regain control, but he already crossed the line when he killed people. Due to these acts, he's left with very few choices to move forward. Even if he could return to normal, he would probably end up back in the asylum for the things he did. Catherine seems to be in the same predicament, so it's not surprising that they both escaped the asylum, even though they never planned it. Catherine returns to Edward's house and puts a bomb in the resonator with a timer set for five minutes. Before she can leave, Crawford grabs her and chains her in Edward's BDSM room. Catherine explains that she has activated a bomb in the attic, but Crawford ignores her warning and confesses his love for her. In the basement, sparks start flying out of the circuit breaker, indicating that the power is returning. Crawford attempts to eat Catherine's brain through her eye socket, but she bites off his pineal gland. By the time Crawford comes to his senses, Edward already has Catherine in his clutches. Crawford taunts Edward by calling him impotent. When Edward chases after him, Crawford runs down the stairs and continues taunting him. Edward transforms himself into a flying monster and throws Crawford further down the stairs. Before Crawford could get up, Edward catches him and devours his head. Upstairs, other creatures start flying towards Catherine, so she moves her arms to prompt them to bite through the straps. After breaking free, she lights up a matchbook and throws it across the room to distract the creatures. She heads downstairs to leave the house, but Edward blocks her way, so she ends up back in the attic. Edward soon reaches her and tries to devour her head, but Crawford emerges from Edward's body and tries to take control of it. Catherine struggles to break free from the monster's grip as Edward and Crawford fight for control. Crawford manages to help Catherine escape from Edward's grasp with only a few seconds remaining on the bomb's timer. Crawford's humanity prevails. Even after he loses his body to the monstrous creature in the other dimension, his ability to resist may have been due to the loss of his pineal gland. Whatever the case may be, Crawford clearly had no intention of surrendering his mind to the creature. In contrast, Edward relished being merged with the creature. It seems that Edward shared the creature's appetite to assimilate other minds even before he had access to the other dimension. He only had a chance to satisfy his cravings when the creature absorbed him. Catherine barely makes it out of the window when the bomb finally explodes. As the fire rages in the house, the neighbors start to gather around Catherine. When a neighbor asks what happened in the attic, Catherine tells them that it ate Crawford and breaks into mad laughter. Catherine shows herself to be almost as mad as Edward in her search for scientific solutions. Even though she still had her conscience intact, 
She had become vulnerable to her dangerous instincts because she made very little effort to fight them. Not everything was her fault, but it seems like she wouldn't have stopped until someone died. Crawford also shares some of the blame. Even though he had been opposed to the experiment, he didn't put up much of a fight after he failed to destroy the resonator on their first night back at the house. Bubba is the most unfortunate victim in this tragedy because he had no interest in conducting the experiment at all. He had constantly been sane throughout their ordeal, but he was the first to fall victim to the nasty creatures from beyond. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.